All right, hello, hello to all my guys, gals, and non-binary pals out there across the electrical ocean. This is Jazzman back with the game. We are playing as full faction uh, shattered speakeasies. What the hell am I going to deploy here? Eh, eh, you know what? Let's go shellaxy because why not? And uh, ooh, we got a bucket head as well. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna run, uh, see how this goes. We're playing. Uh, who's our opponent for today? Who will who will be our unlike unlucky adversary winning numbers oh god man hell no not not this guy well we'll uh, we'll just have to make this as as fun as we can we're gonna play on the big uh, the big acne map as i like to say uh, it's the acne map because uh, I, I whenever i play on this map it, it looks like just a big pustule you know a big pustule on forsaken waste face at least you know that's what i think of it as but uh, we're gonna end our turn here. Shellaxi will cap our font, and then you know Buckethead will will grab our back one. And uh, for those of you who are concerned about old Buckethead, because I don't have a hair note yet, but uh, for that I just have to say to you, look at this guy. He's a moga with a bucket on his head. Do you think he gives a single heckin' heck about having hair around? I think not. So uh, he's he's just gonna mosey on over to that top font and make a real mess out of it. Well, Shalaxi, you know, he's, he's holding down mid. He's just fine where he is. And oh no, the over, the ire, uh, what am I even saying? The ire guard is coming. Yeah, I kept trying to say overlord, but uh, that's a completely different champion altogether. Fire Ruby? Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, you really, you really shouldn't have. So uh, we're going to move old Buckethead along. And uh, this, uh, this is looking okay. Yeah, I mean, I can deal with Fire Ruby, right? I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, let's do this. I'll just do that. And, uh, Fire Ruby doesn't hit stealth. Ah, who cares? I'm gonna put out a rock trap, because I feel like it. We're gonna drop that in the font. Interestingly, winning numbers is not running the expensive build. I figured, you know, he always runs the the most expensive shit. But, uh, we'll, we'll just see, we'll just see how that rock trap can fend him off. And then, uh, Auroral Slag seems like a good choice here. Uh, you know what? We'll also put out our uh, we'll also put out our little buddy, our little illusion boy. Just uh, what the hell? That's not where I deployed you. Where? What the? What are you doing over there? You, okay. Well, he got lost on the way to uh, the deployment zone, so he he spawned uh, wherever he felt like it. And uh, him, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna send him on a sniping mission to winning numbers at shrine. And that seems like a good idea. He can you can take it out in uh, I don't know five damage like about about four or five turns and putting pressure on that. So we'll see what winning numbers does here. It's usually not the smartest player. He, look at him, he's neglecting mid font. He, like, he can't even cap it. Bruh, have you no... Okay, well, he's walking into the wa into the rock trap. So he gets knocked out of my font, thankfully. I can start getting some Nora going, because we all know Full Faction Shattered Peaks is always, uh, is always lacking Nora, right? So Bucket, actually, you know what? I could send Buckethead to really, uh, to really uh, be a pain in the ass to that boss there. He's in, he's in hit range. He, he wants to get some action on. Look at him. He, he just raring to go. So we gotta, gotta get that done. And uh, honestly, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna pacify you, and uh, just ignore the fact that that fire ruby even exists. Cause who, who really cares, right? Actually. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to do that. I wasn't going to consider blocking with a relic, but I mean, that's, come on, like, what do you take me for, a good player? So we're going to, we're going to attack, and we're going to attack, we're going to do this, teleport on in, blind you, ha, now you're, bl wait a minute, blinded? No, you're not blinded, why are you not blinded? Oh yeah, because pacify can't engage, welp. That's uh, that's the end of that, I suppose. I'll blind him on the next turn. I don't I don't need to be. I'm not in a rush. Like, come on. I can uh, I can manage just fine. We're gonna. You know what? We're gonna put a wounded kitten on there. Cause uh, winning numbers to me seems like a uh, like a cat person, if you ask me. So we're gonna put that out and then put some of these out. These are these are just uh, you know these are just the usual. Uh, SP meta plays that we're doing right now. There's not much, uh, not really much to commentate on. Like, Winning Numbers is in such a terrible position here. His Iron Guard is overextended. His Shrine is being bombarded by Moga Slinger. Buckethead making a mess out of that Iron Guard. And, you know, Wounded Kitten, he's just chilling. 
just chilling like a villain. Old Puss in Boots himself. And this Carrier Squire this is going to be a long run towards uh, towards bottom font. Ooh, look at that. Imp Strangler. No, no, Zedin was given false orders. So Zedin is going to have to wait a while for his uh, for his time to shine. And uh, Moga Slinger, <laughs> getting in sniping position. Prime sniping position for that shrine. So uh, Impervious goes down. Not not too big a deal here. I guess in the meanwhile, we'll just uh, we'll just take out this fire ruby. Miss, why the hell are you blinded? Is that actually how that works? Dazzling blinds your own champions too. Well, now now I know for later. And let's see, blinded for two. I'm just gonna I'm gonna blind you again. And that seems uh, that seems right. And I mean that'll 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 last until the impervious wears off, and Buckethead will you know Buckethead can just chill there and be fine. I'll, I'll back him out one so that the aura doesn't hit the slag. Because uh, Buckethead he likes to he likes to stand alone. He he walks the boulevard of broken dreams all by himself. So Overlord going to take a little more damage, and uh, Shalaxi man getting really beat up by that fire ruby. Thank God for blind. Blind is saving my ass right now. The big old meanie that that fire ruby was such a cheese play, but uh, you know you can't cheese a cheeser. I am the undisputed master of cheese, as uh, is self-evident. Is that a fire blast? And you are really desperate today for a win, winning numbers. So he's going for a fire blast on my shalaxi, and you know what? That is just fine with me. I don't I don't need shalaxi. He's used his abilities. They're all on cooldown. I mean, he's useless now. Like, what is it? What is he gonna do? Basic attack? Get real. Uh, Fire Ruby in my font though might uh, might be a bit of a nuisance. But uh, I'm, I'm chilling on one font. He's got two fonts. But hey, the Shattered Peaks bonus makes up for like most of that already. Gives the Iron Guard a potion. I don't know where you think you're going, Mister Iron Guard, but you're gonna walk through Deafening Aura on your way to wherever it is. And uh, he's, he's actually, did he try to make a run for mid and then get re-engaged to the Shalaxi? Okay, well, yeah, I guess you're, I guess you're going nowheresville fast. And Buckethead, oh, oh, oh boy, is Buckethead ever going to have a field day with that Iron Guard here? He's going to, he's going to punch him with those, those claws, go all Wolverine on his ass. And then, uh, and then the Imp Strangler getting blinded here after the engage. And, uh, yeah, underdeps not really known for their cleanse. I mean, un unequipable sort of prevents. What is that? Hidden spell? Uh, yeah, the, apparently there was a hidden spell thanks to my uh, my ever useful skull totem. All the SP players out there, of course, know uh, know and love skull totem. It's probably one of the best anti spell relics in the game. So uh, any aspiring SP players can uh, can really get their uh, dig their claws into that. So actually, uh, you know, I have a I have a banner lurking in my room, Doc. You know what I'm gonna do? Just going to I'm gonna make a run for his back font. That that seems like a better use of Mogaslinger's time. Mogaslinger can deal with that shrine whenever he pleases. So we're just gonna we're just gonna send uh, send him to the top side there. And uh, now that hidden spell it couldn't have been a righteous deflection, could it? I mean, I know winning numbers, and I know that he does enjoy. Righteous deflection, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see if Buckethead can uh, can take this guy down. Oh, he does! And uh, oh, a young man like wow. That I, I had no. To be honest, I had no idea the kitten still spawned if he killed the champ. But uh, we're gonna get our our two by two mountain lion blocking these bozos. Uh, ooh, I want that globe, but uh, my fire the fire ruby is gonna hit Buckethead. Oh well, we'll we'll just we'll have to take that. And uh, you know what? We'll teleport into this back font too, because uh, Auroral Slag is a sneaky little bastard like that. Just just hopping all around the map, and and bam, just like that, have pretty much equalized the state of this game. Now, Imp Strangler is, of course, uh, immune to melee, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to... we're going to put out a Glare Wing, because he can hit from 3 range, and that's fun. Oh, and we have Nora for a Cave Dragon as well. Hmm, should I go Cave Dragon or Jester? I'm gonna go Jester because because uh, I like some laughs. I'm gonna put out the Flying Brothers and uh, Jester. Yeah, Jester is gonna get uh, Aura because I'm an idiot. But I think that's already been established here, right? So the the back font is now under my control. I have no idea what his stealth champ was. Did I just completely miss that deploy? And you know what? Combat log sucks. I'm not gonna bother with it. So. Uh, Mountain Lion actually doing some assault on the Carrier Squire here. That's on 2 HP. 
So I'll be I'll maybe be able to get off a horrific howl next turn. And uh, you know, rural slag, you can uh, you can har start harassing back with the help of that Mogus Linger. And goblin goblin archer to uh, to get in the font too. Uh, where did my mountain lion go? Oh, is a lemur. Okay, so well at least I know what the stealth champion was now. So buckethead uh, buckethead could maybe go for that back font. Uh, he's a little bit far away. Uh, maybe I'll just try and find the lemur. I think that's a better use of my AP. We're gonna dodge because uh, I'm worried he might he might do like a shewell's fire bow or something, and uh, I want to be prepared for that. So Jester, uh, Jester can move in for a divert too on Buckethead. Yeah, get that blocking up. And uh, we'll do this. I don't want to take more Fire Ruby damage than I have to. Now, I know his lemur is like within two spaces of me somewhere, but I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna bother trying to find him too much. We're gonna run our. Uh, we're gonna run our slinger over here, as he should. And then Rural Slag, uh, you're in double hit range. Do I even care though? No, I absolutely don't. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna teleport into your back font. Let's get all up in your the back side. Blind that goblin archer to keep our slinger safe. And uh, what do we want to deploy here? I'm thinking, thinking some range would be nice. We're gonna go with Mundanugu. He seems like a good idea. We're gonna grab that. And we'll just wait right there. In that turn, he, now he can try and grab that globe, but if he does, I mean that fire ruby is kind of blocking. So we, if we can, if we can have him uh, sit against that ruby, if I draw my di uh, my disarray, that could be some nice knockback damage for that imp. The strangler is going in on the jester, kind of to be expected. He was a little overextended. That was a, a terrible misplay on my part, but. With Buckethead in prime font capping position, not really going to mean too much. And of course, a glare wing can just blind that uh, strangler for any follow up damage. Instead of protect the nest, bro, you those eggs are going to get gunned the hell down by Mogus Linger, where you are not making very many smart plays this game, Mister Winning Numbers. So an Arachnoblade on Munda Nugu. Hmm. Now see, th this is a terrible, another terrible play because I can just metamorphosis. Those uh, those spiderlings whenever they start popping up, so it's not really it's not really a big deal for me. Uh, I'm gonna move Slinger along and just start chasing that Goblin Archer, because uh, of course uh, in the in a battle of range the sling is always superior to the bow. And uh, let's see, do I uh, do I afflict here? Mm, yesn't I do not. Uh, rural slag. I'm just gonna. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run at that goblin archer and keep him on his toes. We're gonna blind him, get an attack there, and spiderlings. Uh, what spiderlings? I'm gonna make a basic attack because that's what I want to do. And a buckethead. He wants to get in that font. He's he, that font is just totally gone, and uh, winning numbers can't do a thing about it. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do over here. I know he has a lemur out, but I want to blind you. And I don't want to hit that fire ruby just yet. So we're just going to wait. And uh, oh yeah, detection. I have rattle slag for detection. Nice. We're going to put out a second. Uh, we're going to put out a second slinger too, because the first one has been uh, has been really useful for us already. So the second one comes in exactly where I positioned that spell. And uh, buckethead caps the back font. Still has divert up, of course. So if altered lemur goes for the kill, he's going to be very. He's going to feel very silly. And uh, the blind, and then the ruby's dead next turn, and the the lemur can't really snag my back font without getting uh, detected by rattle. Rattle slag is one of the best slags in the game, I think. I mean, these, these stats, these stats are just are no joke. I mean, you can't get better than this for 57 Nora, I mean, three to four range. Like, come on, there's no way there are any slags better than this. Scour, prove is he? Tra <laughs> okay, he's uh, he's actually transfiguring. And uh, well, Aramalian's going to make an appearance. What was that other stealth champion? No, no, he played a stealth, uh, hidden spell. Of course, I can't actually see what it was. Mm, okay, well, I'm just going to assume it's another Righteous Deflection. Because, of course, the first one was a Righteous Deflection, too, so... It's a safe bet that Winning Numbers is running a, a second copy. Now, uh, Aramalian... Aw, oh, man, Aramalian actually... He barely managed to finish off that Mogus Slinger. And, and, you know, see, he, he knew exactly what he was doing there. That was an admittedly a good play because Moga Slinger is, uh, is very, uh, is very dangerous 
a sniper for Aram Alien. So it's good to get him off the field, and an altered lemur, of course, does get diverted. Buckethead doing his job, as he should. And one HP, man, that Buckethead, there, I've gotten some really good use out of him. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tribal post. And where should I tribal post? I want to get the banner down for the HPs. Now, I'm going to put that here, just so that uh, if he, if that Imp Strangler does somehow manage to uh, take control of bot side, that's just another another object, basically. He'll have to kill. And uh, what else does he got? Render? <laughs> yeah, right. Rend this. I'm going to confuse that away. The uh, Rattleslag here going to get off a hit. Scour. Uh, now, is that the second RD? Yes, it is. Man, it's like I'm fucking psychic. I know ex I knew exactly what it was from the start. So Royal Jester is just going to sit back and uh, try and be as safe as he can. Meanwhile, up here, I mean, like, yeah, like, what is it? What is he? What is he even going to do up here? Like, a rural slag still in his font. Uh, there's just, there's just nothing he can do about that. Like, I'm just going to sit in that font forever. And yeah, I mean, I'm going to teleport into the back. We're going to get, we're going to teleport into the water actually, because a rural slag. I mean, he's, he, he might not look it, but he's actually a very stinky champion. He needs a bath, so he's going to uh, take a dip that water now and now now here's the play i was talking about so we're going to metamorphosis that uh, that spiderling into into a snail so that he can't actually uh you know attack me or anything and uh, we're going to afflict this guy because he's already he's inhibited i mean he's basically just dead on board right so we're going to do that and get hit with bucket head yeah nine damage take that and aura three and bucket head is some bullshit Alakami, if you're looking for champions to, uh, you know, from Shattered Peaks to nerf, I mean, I saw that uh, your your list of SP champions for nerfs wasn't uh, wasn't too robust. Buckethead definitely belongs on there. Like he doesn't even, he doesn't even need no Gaharin. He's a strong, independent Moga who does what he pleases, and no Gaharin is going to stop him. So yeah, please, please, Alakami, our new Balance Overlord. We need we need Buckethead nerfs. The community demands it. So, uh, uh, Altered Lemur barely managing to finish him off there. It, one more turn in that font and Buckethead just would have owned that 1v1. So, Goblin Archer up here. Can't really do anything to Rural Slag. Aramalian, he, he's, he's really struggling to help out. Like, the Snail, completely useless. Carrier Squire, <laughs> doesn't even have a basic attack. I don't know why anyone would run this thing. Fucking garbage-ass runes that, uh, that Winning Numbers is playing here. So Goblin Archer, he's going to try, but there's no way he kills a rural slag right now. You just ain't having it. 3 HP, and that's that's plenty. I mean, on the next turn, <laughs> that Goblin Archer is toast. So uh, we'll see about, uh, and you know, Mundanugo still holding strong in that other font. I'm not too worried about these spiderlings. Uh, Protect the Nest is like, it's a meme to your spell at this point. Like, this, this, the eggs have 1 HP. Like, how can you justify something for 35 Nora? when the summons all have 1 HP. It, it makes no sense at all. So, Altered Lemur winning back that font for the moment. And uh, Imp Jester, or sorry, Imp Strangler, just struggling to maintain maintain control of bot side. He does still have RD up, so we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to deal with that somehow. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna go in for a cackle. This Imp Strangler, Imp Strangler totally loves to laugh. He, he's the kind of guy who just goes to the comedy clubs every night he, he laughs whether the jokes are funny or not. Just like my audience, right? Right? I, I, come on, guys, I, I need you to have my back here. Like, I'm just I'm just talking into the wind, basically. So, uh, glutton, ooh, Gluttonous Overseer. Now, this, this is a good option to deal with Strangler. Because, I mean, you can't, you can't just have, like, <laughs> a flying champion one by one in your font, and then Gluttonous Overseer comes along and then eats it. There, there's no better way to do it. The perfect counter available here, and Mundanugu, in the meanwhile, uh, he's gonna run. He's gonna he's gonna go uh, play safe for the moment, just getting out of range of Aramalian, and then a rural slag coming in to finish off this Goblin Archer. And there's the blind. Not like it matters because Goblin Archer is of course dead. And I think that'll be the end of the turn. Nora wise, still looking good. We're on twenty six. I mean, he's transfigured. He's he's hurting bad for Nora right now. There's literally nothing he can do. 
And yep, Auroral Flag, still on 3 HP, still holding strong. Spiderlings, of course, completely irrelevant. And uh, th this, uh, this snail, <laughs> I mean, you might as well not even bother attacking with it, but he does. He manages to uh, kill his own champion there. And that's, I mean, that's the best he could really hope for, I guess. Killing his own, killing a champion of his with his own, with his own snail. Now that's the real power of Metamorphosis right there. And uh, Aramalian, oh, see, winning number is like, you're, you literally transfigured just to uh, land the finishing blow on an Auroral Slag. A, tw a permanent 25 Nora deficit just to deal with Auroral Slag. Because of course, Avatar is broken, champions that they are cannot uh, be blinded. So Glarewing, getting a couple hits from the Strangler, not uh, not a concern at all. You know what, I could have probably contested that bot font last turn with the Relic instead of uh, wasting Jester's AP. But at this point, I mean, I mean I'm in such a dominating position that, at the, at, like, it would just be bullying at that point, you know? I, I, I don't want to beat winning numbers too badly. The decks he usually plays, they're, uh, it's clear that winning number is, uh, usually goes on lost streaks and uh, has a uh, kind of a fragile ego in my opinion if he, if this is the kind of is kind of crap that he does so you know we'll we'll humor him for a while we'll uh, we'll make him think he has a chance before striking the decisive blow and uh, imp strangler uh, should be dead next turn that righteous deflection ah oh, he's on one so it will not quite wear off that's fine we'll stall with uh, ooh can i get the kill on this yeah i can just kill altered lemur why the hell not? While we're waiting for RD to uh, to expire, we'll just get rid of you. And, uh, you know, we'll confuse this uh, Strangler again. Because why would I let him have upgrades? That makes, like, no sense. When I, can, when I don't have to ha let him have upgrades, he, you know, I can just take them away. So Mogaslinger... Uh, this, now, this Mogaslinger is going to be a lot, more, uh, a lot more valuable than the last one. He can't transfigure anymore, because he's already transfigured. But this one's just going to take out these eggs and uh, probably all the spiderlings along with them. Uh, we'll move Overseer in a tad. Move you out a bit. And I think what we want here is a clay form. Mm, yeah, we'll do clay form. Because clay form's great. He's got restraining aura for the uh, for the annoying kingmaker down there that he that winning number has just deployed. And uh, ooh, ooh, he's getting bold. He's really oh, he's going after the skull totem. He knows so he he's discovered my win con at last. Skull totem putting all of his uh, super champ uh, super champing spells on higher CDs. And then a hammer strike onto the glare wing. Huh. Now that is a move I did not see coming. I'm completely baffled. Winning numbers is one of those players that really just screws with my head every single time. It's like he is he he does one thing and then he does completely the opposite thing, and it's like I'm I, I never know what to expect. So hammer strike onto the glare wing, uh, Kingmaker. Now see here, I'm, I'm what I'm expecting next turn is might of iron fist onto that Kingmaker and then uh, a pummel for the kill. Probably with an Earthquake to finish it off, if uh, if that's not quite enough damage. But uh, here, I think the best option would be to just uh, eat eat that Strangler. We'll, uh, we'll nom him real good. Let's get him out of the fight. And uh, let uh, Gluttonous Overseer digest his meal. We'll swing Clayform over so we can get the font too, because, uh, you know, over uh, Swallow Hole grants font ignorance. Uh, yeah, this Moga Slinger. I'm gonna I'm gonna send him near to the back for these eggs. And uh, once he's in position, he can take out both of them with one shot. So uh, let's see. What are we gonna What are we gonna do with Jester? I could contest this font. Hmm. And I have paralytic feedback too. Ooh, ooh. I wanna, I wanna. So I'm gonna do it. These spiderlings. I mean, they're 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 just nothing, right? I don't I don't really care about them. We're gonna put a misleading signage down too. Because uh, of course uh, the goblin archer is now going to be uh, now going to be wandering, mm, and uh, we'll grab this font with uh, with rattleslide. Keep our Noragen engine going. So uh, we'll just say we'll just bank because we wanna we wanna put in something dangerous next turn. What I'm thinking is either uh, Cyclops Shaman or uh, the ever useful Backlash because he is playing under uh, under depths split. So. 
that'll uh, that'll be nice to counter any sacrifices that he goes with. So it's either that or Cyclops Nemesis. And Cyclops Nemesis is great. Like, look at that. 16 damage and uh, 58 HP for 49 Nora. Literally no downsides to this champion. I, I'm not seeing any. You guys, he's got power attack, resist physical, and, uh, and regen. So, yeah, 49 Nora, like, he just can't be beat. Amazing, amazing champion. Everyone needs to start running him. Uh, oh, Goblin Archer. Goblin Archer managing to break out of that uh, that misleading signage wandering. Too bad. A little bit of a, a little bit of a misstep there from me, but misleading signage is of course random. And uh, winning members passing the turn. Now at this point, I can just leave the font because I mean, Voil Jester has done what he's needed to in there. And uh, I want to save my divert for next time. The Mogus Slinger keeping these Spiderlings busy as is his purpose. Going to keep him uh, out of attack range here. And, uh, now that Clayform and Rattleslag have capped the font. Oh, we moved in with Kingmaker. All right, well, that is, uh, that is a play if I've ever seen one. Hmm, what does Corona have? No equipment yet. All right, well, we'll put another... Ah, oh, what? We don't have, uh, we don't have spell presence. Fine, well, I guess we won't put a, put a wounded kitten on Corona. Well, we'll do it later. There's no rush. Uh, for now, we're going to deal with this Kingmaker in our font. Get a couple hits in there, and then a Niner, and then uh, the D.O.T. should be just enough to finish it off. Hmm, are you in kill range? Nah, you're fine. You're, uh, I, don't need, I don't need to worry too much. We're going to deploy uh, Parasitic Fesh, actually. I considered, I considered Nemesis, but I was worried that if I deployed Nemesis at this point, I mean, I'm in such a great position, he might just surrender. And uh, I want to uh, I want to make this a good game for you guys. I, I really like getting uh, quality gameplay as much as possible, you know. So uh, the avatar uh, actually gaining uh, wandering from misleading signage here. That makes two champions that he's completely unable to move. So a very uh, very very much nuisance of a relic here. The uh, the incoherent babbling is some nice internal synergy. This is, this is a good example of uh, of a well designed relic, I would say. He's got, he's got three completely uh, useless champions right now. I mean, he's already behind on Nora. He's going to have to start uh, really digging deep into his pockets if he wants to gain control. Because each of these costs 10 Nora, right? He's got two wandering champions right now. So if he wants to move at all, that's like an extra 20 Nora. That's an entire turn's worth of Nora gen for, for winning numbers. And uh, Moga Slinger getting run down by these spiders. I mean, they're just... <laughs> They're, they're trying their darndest, and I mean, they got it in the end. So credit where uh, credit is due. Mogaslinger doing his due diligence. And there's another hidden spell. Man, Winning Numbers really loves his hidden spells. I mean, not that I'm concerned. Like, the uh, the Skull Totem is such a hard counter to Winning Numbers' whole deck that, I mean, it, there's really no point in even, uh, in even thinking about them. So did Kingmaker, uh, now that Kingmaker's out of my font, and I get that globe, what I'm thinking about next turn is... Uh, that Cyclops Nemesis I had in mind earlier. But at this point, I think the better option would be to go for the Wounded Kitten. Because uh, Corona, as uh, winning numbers tends to do, is going to be super champed soon. I want to put something on there so that he doesn't drop like a, I don't know, a Vial of Holy Water or a Stone Arm Sash, maybe, for the Grintmaw Racial, giving her some max HP. Now, uh, Parasitic Fesh is going to be my, my ace in the hole here. Him plus Wounded Kitten... It's probably going to be enough to burst down that Corona before she gets any uh, any thirst for battle stacks. Uh, you know, gluttonous overseer still chilling in the back, having uh, having his nice gourmet meal of uh, of imp legs and fronds. And actually, we can uh, we can confuse the Corona. What upgrades do you have? Life drinker? Ah, eh, that's eh, that's not too scary. Uh, oh, I can put out uh, Cyclops and Nemesis now, so we're going to do that. And uh, we're going to move Glarewing along so we don't get Aura'd. I can actually blind that Corona, just so she doesn't do anything crazy next turn. We're going to do that. And uh, that'll probably be the end of uh, that'll probably be the end of our turn here. Misleading signage. Still in that font, I should say. And, uh, wow, Winning Numbers actually is running an Earth Mover in his, uh, in his deck. I don't know why you would run this thing. It's, it's so bad. Like, all it does is create a chasm. You know, it's 68 Nora, but... For, a, for just a normal body that creates a chasm. Like, unless you're running a split with Forsaken Waste, you, wouldn't, you really wouldn't care for Create Chasm, because Domination is really the play that, uh, that goes along with this guy. 
but you know, it's technically a grit maw. So maybe if uh, winning numbers, maybe winning numbers is actually running some uh, some other grit maw to synergize with this racial. But uh, either way, an odd choice. And uh, he's moving his spiderlings kind of oddly. He, he's trying to, it's like he's trying to find the misleading signage. Like he doesn't know where to go. He's just too confused by the uh, by the directions here. I'm wondering now. Now this is this is an old meme, but I'm pretty sure Pox Nora players are mostly illiterate. So I, I feel like there, there's a lot of subtext here to this rune because the spelling on the sign is, I think, representative of how most Pox Nora players. Uh, type in in chat and in discord so it's like the devs are kind of taking a jib at us and that also really says a lot about uh, about how uh, we're about you know the just general uh the doomer mentality of millennials nowadays how they're they're just wandering and lost in society but uh, so a very very uh a very metaphysical rune here by uh, by the devs I, I like the addition of it to shattered peaks especially because shattered peaks is traditionally the chaotic faction the faction that makes the least sense and uh society our society does indeed make very little sense these days so corona actually not even not even <laughs> not afraid of anything she's diving right into this font and she she has no clue what's about to come for her right now she's gonna get pummeled by uh by cyclops nemesis and these other guys we're, just, uh, we're gonna soften her up with the slag. Aw, oh, he gets uh, righteous deflection. Of course he does. That's fine. Uh, I'm not too uh, too concerned now. Does infest go through that? Successful. The attack does no damage. I'm betting it does actually. Mm, let's see here. We have mobility on Glare Wing thanks to homing sense. And uh, let's see. We can go in. Oh, we can. We have just enough AP to uh, to get in there with parasitic fesh and attack. So you're gonna get infested. And uh, Cyclops and Nemesis can get a nice little power attack too on there. And uh, I mean, Clayform can't do much. He he doesn't he doesn't like playing it uh, playing it too aggressive. But I'm gonna do a binding chains, keep Corona where she is for the time being. And then we're going to confuse, and then we're gonna divert back out a little wee bit. We're just uh, we're just going for Aura. Nah, actually, we won't go in for Aura because I don't want her to like disengage and then kill the, uh, the Glare Wing. That would be no bueno. Uh, at this point, ooh, he's got a lot of champions and a tight AOE here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disarray. Let's knock some guys around, see where they uh, see where they land. Man, takes out two spiderlings, all for the low price of 25 Nora. Very useful. Oh, and it even knocks oh it even knocks uh, Corona out of my font. So a double whammy there from the uh, from the di uh, disarray. And we're just gonna move. We're gonna move like this. Yeah. And uh, just end the turn. So he's out of my font, taking some aura damage, taking some fesh damage, and uh, <laughs> some super champ, right? Wound Wounded Kitten hasn't even gotten his chance to uh, to get into the action. But very soon, very soon, Wounded Kitten will spawn, and Wounded Kitten will uh, solo his avatar. So let's see, what have, what have you got up your sleeve now, winning numbers? You've got Corona and a Dream, because uh, I, don't, I don't really see any champions of note on the board. In your in your state you could maybe you could maybe try and go for a kill on the glare wing with a price of victory but i mean at that point like you're like you're restrained you're infested oh, he's going for an impervious all right so he, he's again trying to rely on spells versus uh, my my secret win con skull totem very unwise move here by uh, by winning numbers and i mean if that corona does live long enough gluttonous overseer can have his seconds can go in for second breakfast not just not just one breakfast but second breakfast as well because in shattered peaks of course there is always more than one breakfast and these spiderlings i mean they're 10 hp like the as i've said before there's really no threat here from the spiderlings Pr uh, protect the nest very inefficient spell the spiderlings take way too long to get into play the winning numbers has managed to uh, finally by the way win back his top fonts from uh, from the menace that is misleading signage, and uh, he just he just going into my font like it's like it's nothing like he just wants he just wants in there, but uh, we can block him out we can block him out with Nemesis and with uh, with Royal Glare Wing. I can actually probably just send in Clay Form and then let Rattle Slay grab Bot. But they, ooh, he's paralyzing himself. That's pretty nice. 
Maybe it'll let me get a kill with, uh, mm, let's see, I do have boulder throw. There's another protect the nest from winning numbers. I mean, I guess he's, I guess he's just playing a meme deck. Uh, there's no other way to say it. Like, he's just playing some of these runes. Very odd. He didn't even move his, uh, his earth mover. That's how little he cares about it. So, uh, Corona's here. Probably gonna, just gonna die to the fesh in all honesty. I can kind of just ignore her at this point. Mm, we're gonna keep, uh, we're gonna keep Jester a little bit back. Because we don't want to, we don't want him to get nommed on by these spiderlings. Uh, ooh, Clayform is in font grabbing position, so we're just gonna take that, take that winning numbers. You are nothing to me. I'm gonna engage, and we're gonna back away. Eh, we're not gonna, we're not gonna move up too far because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to aura that goblin before it's uh, time to become unparalyzed. I guess just, uh, I guess just move along, like Rattleslag is, uh, Rattleslag can be moved up. Yeah, we'll put out Burn Pyro, because Burn Pyro can, uh, Burn Pyro and Spiders get along. Oh, hold on, where am I going to put him? Where will I put him? Burn Pyro, please, tell me, give me, uh, give me some kind of sign where you want to be deployed. Anywhere, anywhere at all. Okay, that's good enough. And, uh, let's see, False Orders, okay, we're going to do another False Orders. Because, I mean, Winning Numbers has been banking Nora for some time now, and uh, he should have enough to deploy something big. Uh, the right just to fly, uh, yeah, and of course, 3 HP Corona, like, she's just, she just screwed. There's really nothing you can do here versus Cyclops Nemesis. They're gonna get beat to shit. And he tries for the Fire Blast, of course, playing right into my hands yet again. They, ooh, he's gonna get a, okay, well, he's gonna get a life drinker off of him. Fine, you get one, you get one life drink off of you be that wait he didn't get a oh yeah because i have him confused man now i'm the one who's confused i completely forgot that i did that and uh wow he he really he kind of screwed up there and oh what bro you're disconnecting against okay well i guess he uh i guess he realized the futility of his actions this entire time and uh yeah he disconnected no 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 listen this isn't uh this isn't a rage quit this is just this is just winning numbers realizing that his uh, that his life decisions were not uh, harmonious enough. You know, because you know he he tries so hard to do this kind of to do this stuff with Corona that he just he he doesn't have the soul. You know, he doesn't he doesn't have it in him to to believe in his champions the way I believe in mine. Like when you look at Rattleslag, when you look at Cyclops Nemesis, Voiled Jester, and Burn Pyro, you don't see much, right? You guys don't see much, but I see potential. I see the true heart and soul, the game that we all know and love. And it's in these champions that we all need to believe. Because if we can't believe in Burn Pyro, who can we be who can we really believe in these days? I if believing in Burn Pyro is wrong, I don't want to be right. Let's just I'm just gonna end that there. Because I, I can't believe winning number is just he doesn't have the. He doesn't have it in him to uh, to really believe the way I do, and I mean maybe he, or maybe he just realized that his deck was uh, completely inferior, right? So he, he he's been turtling. I think I feel like if this game did go on any longer, it would just turn into like a Shrine Master match with uh, you know winning numbers turtling on uh, on his fonts, and then me just waiting for the perfect opportunity to pounce on him with like Bert, with with Burn Pyro and such. So we all know, if, if, if any of you have been around the Discord for long enough, we all know how much Burn Pyro loves to pounce on helpless, uh, on helpless trolls. And, uh, you know, five, okay, well, I guess he's just running down the clock. He's not, he decided not to come back. So I really did, uh, I, of course, I believed in my runes the entire time, and that's why I came out on top. So well played, uh, despite the rage quit, and uh, we'll see everyone in the next video.